Now I invite the third speaker of the day, Dr. Murali Dharan. He will be talking on sowing of seeds as gleaned from Krishi Parasara. He will be, uh, he is uh, assistant professor of the Kupaswami Shastri Research Institute. Dr. P.C. Murali Dharan also doctorate in Sanskrit and his thesis was on Parijat Nataka of Kumara Tatacharya, critical edition and study under the supervision of Dr. K.S. Balasubramanian, director Kupusami Shastri Research Institute. Dr. Murli Dhan has served in various schools having 17 years of teaching experience. Currently, he is the assistant professor at the institute. He has attended many seminars, presented uh, papers and delivered lectures at various institutions. He has authored a book titled Krishi Parashara, which was published at the inauguration of the 75th anniversary celebrations of our institute. He has also authored research articles dealing with various topics in uh, different UGC CAD approved journals. And he is currently assisting in the Vaishnava Agama and Manuscript Cataloging projects, which would be published shortly by the Kupusami Shastri Research Institute. I welcome you, sir. Vyakya Mudram Karasara Sijaihi Pustakam Shanka Chakre Vibhrat Bhinnas Patika Ruchire Pundari Ke Nishannaha Amla Nashtrihi Amrita Vishadai Ramshubhif Plavayan Maam Avir Bhuyat Anagamahi Maam Anase Vagadhishaha Shri Lakshmi Hayavadana Parabrahmane Maha. At the outset, let me offer my humble pranams to the chairperson of this session, Dr. V. Kameshwari Maha, and other distinguished scholars. My topic is sowing of seeds as green from Krishi Parashara. Agriculture involves many activities such as selection of soil, tilling, and so on. Among this, Sowing of seeds is one. If a person is so desirous of high yield, then he has to take care of the sowing meticulously. In literature, it attracts considerable recognition. Our ancestors taught us the indigenous techniques for achieving high returns in the agricultural production by paying special focus to this process. All the seeds do not fructify. There are some techniques involved to make the seeds a growth yielding one. Firstly, the potential ones are to be segregated from the feeble ones. Secondly, they are to be properly preserved from the harms caused by the natural calamities such as flood and And thirdly, the soil is to be tilled and manured properly for the proper growth of the plants. Germination is possible only from the good seeds. This point shall be discussed in this paper. First, let us see the reference to sowing in Vedas. In the Rig Veda, when prayers are offered to the Marut deities, it is mentioned that the longevity in life, bliss to be bestowed like the potential seeds. Many references to this process, that is sowing, See, uh, can be seen in our Sanskrit literature or ample testimony to show that our ancestors have given importance to this. In Vedas, the word sowing is not used everywhere connecting the agriculture. Somewhere it is used as part of explanation of the sacrificial rite. For instance, in one of the hymns of the Rig Veda, the stone used to crush the Soma juice is extolled. Here, the sowing of seeds by the cultivator is shown as example. In another hymn, where the Ritviks are praised, Sayanacharya citing Apastamba mentions that the seven seeds, such as Vrihi, Masha, Tila, etc., are to be sown on the proud field in Gramya, that is village, and Venu, Shyamaka, Nivaraka, etc., in Aranya, forest, where the land is not tilled. Tilamasha vrihyadikam gramya saptakam venu shyamaka nivaradikam aranya bija saptakam cha krishta krishta yoho nivapata sapta gramyaha krishte sapta aranyaha krishte akrishte iti apastam baha In one of the hymns in the Atharva Veda, it is prayed that just like the seeds sown on the well-tilled land grow, likewise, the progeny, cattle and food also be grown from the food. Sayana Charya while commenting on the mantra of Shatapata Brahmana, he says that the seeds 
or to be sown in udumbara chamas. Here the word chamas means the vessel made up of udumbara tree, that is fig tree. Here it is emphasized that the bija vapana, that is sowing of seed, is to be done on the well-tilled land with the recital of 12 ricks of the anushtub meter. He further says that for the act of sowing, the cultivation land is the adhikarana, that is support. The seeds such as vrihi, yava, etc. sown here would be resulted in the form of anna, food. What types of seeds are to be sown on which season is mentioned in the Taitriya Samhita? He gave the sap to the spring barley, to the hot season, plants to the rainy season, rice to autumn, beans and season to winter and the cool season. Sa rasamaha vasantaya prayacha dhyavam grishmaya aushadhir varishabhyaha vrihin charade mashatilo hemanta shishirabhyam from the above mentioned references, it is understood that, the, uh, that during the Vedic period there was awareness among the people on sowing. Apart from rice, they have produced cereals, pulses also. Sowing in post-Vedic period. Vishnu Purana mentions about 17 types of grains. It is implied here that during the time of this Purana, the practice of cultivating the different species of grains was in vogue. Vriha yaschaya vaschaiva godhu maschana vastilaha priyangavo hyudarascha kora dusha sati nakaha masha mudga masurascha nishpa vasakulathakaha adakya chana kaschaiva shana saptadasha smritaha Panini uses the term vapya to refer the soil which is kept ready for sowing. Also, the term bija karoti is mentioned by him to denote the sowing of seeds after tilling gets over. This is explained in Kashika as saha bijena vilekhanam karoti. Vriksha Ayurveda refers to three kinds of plants. Those that grow from the seed, stalk and bud. Jambu, punnaga, champaka, nagakesara, etc. grow from the seeds. While Dadini, Plaksha, Udumbara, Karavira, etc. can grow from the seeds and stalks as well. The method of sowing is referred in this text. It gets varied, depends on the different kinds of seeds. The seed extracted from the dried fruits gets ripened in the natural course and season is then sprinkled with milk and dried for five days. It is then smoked with mustard seed mixed with vidanga. It is also noted here that the seeds, if subjected to the following treatment method, would become excellently fit for sowing according to the experts. The seeds are to be soaked in milk, dried well in shade, rolled into powder uh, of brihati, tila and nala, that is hollow stalk of lotus, mixed with mustard. This text states that different procedures have to be adopted depends on the size of seeds. In the case of larger seeds, they are to be sown singly and smaller ones in multiples. Especially the seed of Naranga is to be sown in a slanting position with hand. The text Kashyapiya Krishi Sukti, a treatise on agriculture of sage Kashyapa, in which the names of different kinds of seeds have been mentioned. For example, it refers to the seeds of different kinds of rice varieties. This kind of discrimination has been made among these species of rice, of rice seeds on the basis of their distinct characteristics of color, taste and the essence. Shalayadi kalamadischan, shattika dischatatridham, rasa varnaka jatyadehi, vibhaktam krishiko vidaihi. In the Amarakosha, lands are being classified on the basis of the species of seeds cultivated on them. For instance, on the land where Vrihi is raised, it is known as Vraiheya, Shali, Shaleya and so on. Similarly, the land on which tilling is carried out while the seeds are sown, it is known as Bijakrita. And the sowing, if takes precedence, followed by tilling of the land, is Uptakrishta. 
Even the classification of land was done during the age of this lexicon on the basis of the quantity of grain sown as dravnika, uh, adhakika, etc. Grains are classified on the basis of seasons in which they are sown. It is referred in Ashtadhyayi. The grains sown during the summer season are called Grishmaka and those that are sown during the spring season are known as Vasantaka. The Shangadara Paddhati in which a section called Upavana Vinoda is devoted to horticulture. It is observed here that the Ashada and Shavana months are the best for sowing. Unlike the Kishi Ashara, which will be explained by me shortly, there is no discrimination of the months for sowing as best to middle etc. But it is said here that some opinion that sowing can be done except to some. According to Pani, the Ashwayuja Purnamasi, the that is the full moon day of the Ashwayuja month is considered to be auspicious for sowing. Now let us sowing in Krishi Parashara. Krishi Parashara is one of the ancient texts of sage Parashara dealing with some of the aspects of agriculture such as ploughing, sowing, watering, etc. It also discusses about the rainfall patterns being constantly evolved due to the planetary movements between the different zodiacs. This is also called Krishi Paddhati or Krishi Vidana Paddhati. Krishi Parashara does not accept the sowing of seeds at any time. It prefers the auspicious months asterism and titis to be followed for carrying, carrying out this exercise. It states that on which of the months sowing is supposed to be carried out. This activity if carried out during the months uh, such as Vaishaka, Jeshta, Ashada and Shravana is rated as best, middle, bad and worst respectively. Vaisha Kevapanam Shreshtam Jaishte Tu Madhyamam Smritam Ashadhe Chadhamam Proktam Shravane Chadham Adhamam Krishi Parashara further discusses in detail on the stars and the titis for sowing. Similarly, it mentions the avoidable titis on which sowing is prohibited. Further, the sowing is prohibited on three days, that is between the end of, end of Jeshta and the beginning of Ashara when the earth is menstruated. Preparatory work for pre preparatory work before sowing. Sowing, though is seen as one among the many processes of crop cultivation, Krishipar Ashara gives more importance to it. The cultivator who is engaged in sowing is urged by Krishipar Ashara to ensure the proper maintenance of seeds. It should not be kept near the anthill, in the cattle shed or a place where the child has been delivered or at a house of a barren woman. Before sowing is done, Indra is to be propitiated. Also, the occasion is marked with a sumptuous feast to the farmers. Cultivation should not be commenced without ploughing and if a person does so, he is doing it only out of pride and physical strength. The deities concerned are to be duly propitiated. The auspicious day and time have to be chosen before one commences the ploughing. Parashara opines that the seeds meant to be sowing should not be collected from the well-grown plants as all those plants grown in the field do not yield the fruits. Seed consists of two functions, namely sowing and transplanting. The former is free from diseases while the latter is with maladies, that is defects. In our experience, we find that not all the transplanted saplings or plants grow well. This may be due to the prevailing atmospheric conditions around the transplanted ones. I would like to hear mention, I would like to hear mention, nowadays, see the doctors engaged in the process of transplantation of human organs, they say that the tra transplanting, we won't guarantee that the transplanting will be Everybody knows that. And uh, Parashara lays down an emphasis upon having the potential seed by citing the view of sage Gaga. The view of first lies upon fruits. It is barren. If it is barren, then field, wood, manure, cultivator, mark of clouds, everything is meaningless. It is mentioned here that this rule is applicable to 
few measures to be by the cultivator before spraying. After spraying the seed under the sun, they have to be collected in the month of March. In January to February, these seeds collected in the bag are to be removed. Their presence would spell damage to them. It is important to ensure to be to be uniform in nature. It's that the species have to be picked up by subject to ensure their better The seeds are to be coated with the cow dung each day for five days and then the cultivator has to perfume and fumigate them with the smoke caused by the burning of vidanga and clarified butter. Swabhava kupalitam nirdosham shushka matapi pala bijam samolittam gomayadila panchakam vidanga grita dupena dupayet karayet brisham sarve shameva vrikshanam yesha bija vidhismrutaha Upavana Vinoda describes about a particular treatment to be given for pulses and sea semen. These two are to be sown after the pre field is ploughed well. To ensure good yield, it adds another technique that the seeds taken from the well-grown crops are to be sown again on the well-tilled field. Samyak krishte sami chetri mashan uttvati lamstata sunish pannana pani yattatra bijo tirishyate Bharat Samhita says that before sowing, the soil on which the sea semen is intended for cultivation should be given the treatment of sea semen manuring that would act as an excellent green manure. The sea semen should be sown at first when it is in full bloom. It should be crushed and allowed to mix up with the soil which is known as sea semen manuring. Mridvi bhusarva vrikshanam hitata syam tilam vapet pushpitam stam chamrudhiyat karmaitat pratamam bhuvaha. Artha Shastra which deals with many subjects offers the treatment techniques of varied nature to different seeds before they are sown or the saplings planted. The seeds of grains ought to be exposed to mist and heat for seven nights. The seeds of koshi that is mudga and masha etc. are treated similarly for three nights. The seeds of sugarcane and, like, and the like are plastered at the cut end with mixture of honey, clarified butter. Cotton seeds with cow dung and water pits at the root of trees are to be burnt and manured with the bones and dung of cows on proper occasions. Tusharapayana mushna shoshanam cha sapta ratra diti dhanya bijana triratram pancharatram va Koshi dhanyana madhu grita sukara vasabihi shakra dhyuptabihi kanda bijana chedha lepu madhu gritena kandana asti bijana shakra dhalepaha shakina gartha dhahu gosti shakra dhihi kale dhohurdamcha. Krishipanashara lays down an emphasis on the distance to be maintained while sowing seeds. The distance between the crops varies in different months. It is one hand cubit in the months of Ashada and Karkata, half a cubit in Shravana and a space of four fingers in Bhadrabada. Navrikcharupam dhanyanam bija karishana macharet napalanti dridas sarvem bija kedara samsthitaha hastan taram karkatechan simmi hastardhane vachan rupanam sarvashasyanam kanyayam chaturangulam Procedures to be followed after sowing. There are some procedures to be adhered by the cultivator in the post-sowing period to ensure a good yield. Krishi Parashara addresses these needs. After sowing, maika, maika here, it is a Bengali word which means a ladder-shaped contrivance, yantra, which is used for leveling the rice field. 
So that Naika should be applied to ensure the uniform growth among the seeds. Then uh, watering is necessary to those seeds that are sown and the saplings planted. In this respect, Krishi Parashara suggests a few more techniques to be adopted in paddy. If one is uh, desirous to see the paddy free from disease, then the water is to be retained at the level. And the remaining water should be drained off in the month of Bhadrabhava. Nairu Jartham Hidhan Yanam Jalam Bhadravi Mochayat Moonam Atrarpitam Tatra Karayat Jala Rakshanam in this correction, it is said that the water is to be preserved in the months of Ashwina and Kartika at the advent of autumn, just like a well-wisher being desirous of protecting the woman in the family. Ashwina Kartika Chaiva Dhanyasya Jala Rakshanam Nakritam Yena Murkhena Tasya ka shasya vasana yatha gularthi kurute kulastri padi rakshanam tatha samrakshane dvari sharatkale samagati Nourishment of soil through manuring plays a very important role in the act of crop cultivation. If the soil is enriched with manure, the seeds sown on it would absorb the nutrients and grow well. In the text, Brihat Samhita, Vrikshayur Veda, uh, so this text, uh, they, they, it is uh, discussed in detail. So the procedures pertaining to the preparation of manuring are discussed. In Upamana Vinayada also, under the section Poshana Vidhi, this has been analyzed well. But uh, in Krishi Parashara, it does not delve deep into this process unlike this text. For few details are obtained under the caption Gomaya Kutodhara, in which Parashara appears keen upon promoting the natural cow dung manure. He says that the cow dung heap is to be lifted on an auspicious day and on an auspicious star by spades after the worship in the month of Madha. The collected heat is to be dried under the sun after having made into small balls. These balls are to be powdered and thrown into the pits of every field in the month of Palguna. At the time of sowing this manure, which is in the form of powder, shall be taken out of the pits. Plants that grow without manure would not yield any result. Especially Krishi Prashara mentions this. Maghe gomaya kutam thuru sampujya shraddha yanvitaha shubha medivase rikshe Raudre samsushya tat sarvam kritva gundaka rupinam Palguni pratike dare sarangarte nidhapayet tatu vapanakale kuriyat saravimochanam vinasarena yadhanyam vardhate pala varjitam when sowing, one should exercise caution that the seeds are not coming into close contact with one another as that would affect their germination rate. Therefore, Krishi Parashara suggests that about the process called thinning out of paddy. It is mentioned in the Krishi Parashara, it is called, that process is known as Kattana. This must be carried out in the month of Ashada or Shravana. The Kattana, if not done so, would remain as seeds only. As long as 
whatever the process we employ, it won't work. Okay. So it is especially mentioned in the Krishi Prashara. Ashade Shravana Masi Dhanyam Akatta Yebudaha Anakattam Tuyad Dhanyam Yathabijam Tataivahi As the seeds go, the weeds around them should be removed. If not so, they would pose risk and spoil them ultimately. Hence, the process known as DVD should be undertaken. In Krishi Parashara, this is explained under the uh, title Dhanya Nistrini Karana. Nishpan Namapiyad Dhanyam Nakritam Trina Varjitam Nasam Yatpalanat Muti Trinakshina Krishir Bhavit. With this, uh, I'm very much, uh, let me express my gratitude uh, to everybody, uh, to Dr. K. S. Balasubramaniam sir, Vasu sir, and uh, V. Kameshwari ma'am, and uh, my, to my colleagues for the opportunity having given to me to speak a few words about uh, my topic on this occasion. Thank you very much. Another good paper. I have been fortunate enough to have very good papers under my uh, chairmanship. Good. Well done, well prepared. He has traced the sowing of seeds from the time of Vedic times, from Vedic times, Rigveda, Atharveda, then Sayana's commentary on Shatapata, Taitriya Samhita, post Vedic period like Panini, Vrikshayar Veda, Kashi Piya, Krishi Shastra, Ashtadhyayi, Upavinavanada, Krishi Parasara, and all the texts. Very well. Very, very well, clearly trace the development of the process of this sowing of seeds. There are two things that I noticed. One, on Krishi Parasara says, auspicious month, Ashada is not an auspicious month. But Upavanada Vinoda says, Ashada is an auspicious month. Upa Upavanada Vinoda Kara probably is a southerner. Namalika Adi Patam Thedi Vidayana Namacholva. So probably Upavanada Kara is a southerner. This is how we find out the dates and the places of the people uh, of our, our uh, poets and others who never talk about themselves. They don't give their details at all, only we have to derive. And another thing is Kattana. Kattana. What do you say in English? Thinninga. Nistrinikarana means Kala Yadukardu. Kala Yadukardu. Kattana means Thinni. Thinninga of the other. No, something he said. Come to the mic. Come. That's a new word. Kattana. Pruning. 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 You said thinning of the seeds? Thinning out of paddy. Thinning out of paddy. What do you mean by that? Thinning out of paddy. You mean removing the husk? No, ma'am. Actually, so thinning out of paddy is a process of thinning out of paddy. Now we have seeds in the seeds. That's why we have seeds in the seeds. Actually, you might have seen. You can see it. If we have seeds in the seeds, we have seeds. Generally, I told you, as far as I mean, I told you, 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 Orang yang ada tulang itu seed link siru. Kacau 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 kacau. Orang yang ada tulang siru. Apa dia ikut bodoh? Orang yang agama nara ya perlu. So agama ini apa? We need to segregate. See, we need to segregate. That process is known as thinning out of paddy. Okay, very good. Okay, that was a new uh, information terminology that we learned, and also mica. Uh, Maika is, Maika is a, not a, uh, it does not belong to Sanskrit language. It is a Deshi word. Ena itu hundi itu origin hundi pati ena Krishi Parashara. Editors kuda, they opine that so the origin must have been Bengal. Okay. So different views are there. Hmm. So Bengal word the even so editors say soldra. What did you mean by that? Ladle or ladder? Something you said. Uh, it is the ladder. Ladder. Yeah. Okay. Ladder like structure you uh, said. Ladder like structure by which leveling of field can be done. Yes. Hmm. From Vigat Samhita and Vikshayarvada also he had given information. Urisa hu irukkalandra mari uru thought irukk, uru view irukk. Yana scholars maddi ila, it may be belong to either Urisa or Benga. Abdiindra uru dhu irukk, dispute irukk. And one more thing, 
there is a, another word he used kuddala kuddala means paid namba yara ninge yara adu ivaroda ramayanam chakravarti tirumavan padichirundha ramanu lakshmanu ellaru ooruku poracha lakshmanan kuda kundali eduthunu pona nu eduvaru kundali ennan romma naal vachirukke iniki kuddala is kundali in tamil மருவி வந்திருக்கு ஸோ என்ன வேணும் அவளுக்கு கொத்தரத்துக்கு மம்முட்டி வேணும் இருக்கும் இல்லையா அதை எடுத்துன்னு போயிருக்கா ஸோ குத்தால இஸ் மம் மண்வெட்டி வெரி நைஸ் ப்ரெசன்டேஷன் வி லேர்ன் சம்திங் நியூ டுடே தேங்க்யூ வெரி மச் ஃபார் யுவர் எஃபர்ட்ஸ்